All right, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ohio Port Council's virtual field trip. Uh, my name is Melissa Bell, and I work for the Ohio Port Council and do membership outreach. And I'm happy and excited to be your host today um, as we tour a farm, a uh, home farm. We are at Statler Farms, and we're very lucky to have Anthony Statler with us. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about excuse me, his farm and, and what he does. Um, but before we do that, uh, two quick housekeeping items. One, I'd like to make sure that I thank the sponsors of this activity. Um, the Ohio Port Council is sponsored by Farm Credit Services of Mid-America, uh, the Ohio Soybean Council, and also Cargill. And so they're great sponsors to be able to provide this opportunity for students um, all across Ohio, and actually today all across the United States, to visit a virtual hog farm tour. Um, so with that, let's introduce all the classrooms and make sure that everyone's here and can hear us and we can hear you. So um, first off, we have Howe Elementary. Do you want to say hi? Hi, perfect. Okay, great. We've got you on there then. Um, Dunlow Elementary. Hi. Good morning. And Royal View Elementary. Perfect. Well, welcome again. And um, at this time, I'm excited to introduce to you our farmer. It's Anthony Statler. And Anthony is going to tell us a little bit about his farm um, and what he does. So with that, Anthony, you can take it away. All right. Well, thanks, Melissa. Hi, everybody. And thanks for, uh, for joining me out in the hog barn today. Uh, my name is Anthony Statler, uh, part of Statler Family Farms. Uh, Statler Family Farms consists of my father and my wife and mom and my three kids, uh, Peyton, Case, and Axe. Um, we are a wean to finish uh, hog operation that uh, takes care of hogs for horde livestock uh, out of Buse Cyrus. Um, so that means that we get pigs in when they're little babies at 21 days old and they will be in our nursery for about 49 days. And then after those 49 days, we will move the pigs into a barn like I'm setting in here right now, uh, which is our finishing barn. And we will take those pigs from uh, roughly 60 pounds up to uh, finish weight right around 285 to 295 pounds. Right there, you can see that Dan uh, Sharon is the outside of our nursery barn. Uh, there, that's where we get all of our baby pigs in. Uh, total on our farm, uh, we've got a little over 7,000 hogs on our farm. So there's 2,400 head uh, in each of our three barns. Um, and so keep us busy uh, with chores in the morning and uh, chores in the evening, and along with everything else with our grain crop operation as well. Sounds good. Why don't you tell us a little bit? Um, tell us a little bit more about your the whole farm. You you said you have um, crops too. Yep. So we raise about a thousand acres of uh, corn, beans, and wheat uh, that uh, goes to market. Um, our corn goes to ethanol and goes towards with the DDGs. Then will go towards our hog uh, feed and everything. Um, as I said, we're about a thousand acres of corn, beans, and wheat. Um, and then we have the hog operation uh, here. Sounds good. So let's talk about the barn that you're in right now. Why don't you describe for us, um, you know, what that barn is and tell us yep. a little bit about those pigs that are in there. Sure. So the barn that I'm sitting in, uh, like I said before, is a finishing barn. And this is where we take our pigs after they leave the nursery. After about 49 days, they'll come into here. Uh, you can kind of see in the background uh, right about there you'll see the feed tubes that are coming down from the ceiling and our air inlet that uh, gives our big fresh air uh, throughout the whole entire day that they're out here um, and then we have our feed tubes that give them fresh feed um, by the computer system uh, everything here is integrated by a computer to where they're fed um, whatever times that we have set uh, to be able to feed um, and then they have all fresh water. I'll swing over here. You can kind of see the swinging water from the ceiling there. And that is where our pigs get all our fresh water um, there. So everything is made to be to where our pigs are comfortable the whole entire time that they're here. 
that's one of the nice things about a modern hog barn is that we can uh, try to keep our barns temperature controlled um, and be able to give our pigs the best opportunity that they have uh, to to grow. So, sounds good. Now, um, so tell us about those pigs exactly. Like, how much do they weigh? Uh, you know, how many can you kind of pan around and show us the whole barn? How many are in there? Sure. So, let me see here. Stan asked me to kind of flip around here. Let me see if I can. There we go. Will that work, Dan? Yes. Yep. There we go. So, these pigs here um, are about uh, 14 weeks old. Um, that they've been in here. Uh, they are about uh, anywhere from 100 to about 120 pounds um, that they came from the nursery uh, just about seven weeks ago. Um, they are just a mix. They're uh, genetically bred. Uh, they're a PIC um, genetic, uh, which just means that uh, they are artificially inseminated, I guess. Um, and we will uh, raise these guys up to, like I said, about the 285 pound range, and then uh, they will go off the market. I might have missed it. How much do those pigs in there weigh? Uh, these pigs in here weigh right around 100 to 120 pounds right now. Okay. All right. Very good. Yep. Um, so my first question is, are pigs always raised inside? Uh, most of the pigs in the United States are raised inside. Um, and the reason we do that is because we can control the climate and to be able to raise these pigs uh, to be, uh, to grow healthy and, and strong. Uh, you can kind of see at the back, uh, at the barn, there's some fans that are blowing out just because it's a little bit warm outside. So we have, uh, once those fans come on, we're able to keep the temperature at a controlled pace, um, at a controlled temperature, and along with the air inlet that you can see there on the ceiling, um, it gives us fresh air and allows us to be able to keep the pigs healthy on here. So what happens in the winter is how do you, how does that barn stay warm in the winter? Yep. So when we get pigs in on the winter, uh, we have heaters that you can kind of see hanging up there uh, in the center of the screen. So that allows us to supplement heat for what we have. Um, a lot of our bigger pigs, uh, we don't have to uh, heat the barn as much because they give off so much body heat. So, which is kind of nice for us. Um, but that still allows us to keep uh, everything at an average temperature uh, for pigs. When our pigs come in to the barn, um, when they're little babies, our barn is set at 80 degrees, uh, along with heat lamps where they can lay underneath if they want to get a little bit warmer. Um, and then from 80 degrees, uh, that temperature will continue to drop over the time that they're here down to about 67 degrees um, from the time that these guys uh, will go out to market on that. Great. Uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about their feed? What are they eating? How do they get feed? Yep. So all of our feed comes by semis um, and then into feed bins that are outside the barn. And then our feed is brought into the barn by these white tubes that are coming from the ceiling and going down into that feeder that you see that the pigs are eating out. Um, the feed basically consists of corn and soybeans and uh, some uh, key essential vitamins that the pigs feed. Um, along with some DDGs uh, that I talked about earlier, which comes, which is a byproduct of uh, ethanol. So, and I will show you guys a little bit of the feed that we have here. It's inside of a feeder. So, you can be able to see that it's just ground up soybeans and corn. And, like I said, the vital vitamins and everything that they need um, in order to grow. So as you can see there, what pigs eat, uh, they eat a lot of corn and a lot of soybean meal, uh, which is ground up to what, uh, pretty much what I had showed you there. Um, and like I said, we also have different vitamins that go into that, um, salts and 
everything like that. We go through a, about 20 different diets from the time that they start here at our farm to the time that we uh, finish them out. So we're always, always tweaking and changing uh, things to be able to optimize our growth on our home. Now, where do they get water, Anthony? Yep. So our water also comes from the ceiling here. I'll kind of stand over here. So you can see the swinging water here. So as our pigs come over there, over to the water, they can come here. And when they squeeze down on that, they're able to get water anytime that they want. And then in our nursery, we have canned water that they just pretty much just drink out of a small little pan and uh, get their water that way. Great. Well, so when you were showing that water, then um, we saw four, and I noticed that there are, uh, it's, it's slatted. Can you explain what that's all about? Um, yep. And I assume that's where the poo is. Yep. So just like every, every uh, an living animal, uh, everyone produces uh, manure or poop, um, where when our animals go to the bathroom, uh, they will go and that our manure will fall down through the slats into basically a holding pit that is underneath our barn. Now, once a year or twice a year, we will go through and we will take all of that manure that we have and we will put that and apply that um, onto our ground uh, that we have for all of our crops and some neighbor's crops. And we will use that fertilizer then for all of our corn, beans, and wheat as fertilizer. So our farm um, uses very little commercial fertilizer um, just because we have an abundance of our own manure to where we can utilize that to be able to grow our crop. Great. Um, why don't, can you tell us a little bit like what's a day, uh, a day in your life like? Sure. So Typically about 4.30 or quarter till 5, uh, we're getting up and coming out and checking on the pigs. Uh, we will walk each barn in each pen and make sure all of our pigs get up. Um, typically, I will start in the nursery and I will work on uh, checking the smallest pigs all the way up to the biggest pigs. So the smallest pigs, when we get them in, um, take a lot more care just because they're younger and we like to get them started off um, in a really good way. So that might be some extra feeding or going through and making sure that everyone is healthy, their ears are perked up, um, and that everyone is happy, uh, just to make sure that there's no tweaking with ventilation or anything that we need to do there. So we'll get done in the nursery and then we'll head to a barn, to our finishing barn, uh, to the next size group of pigs that we have. And from there, we will go through, walk each pen, make sure all the pigs get up, kind of look through, make sure they're all healthy um, and eating and that we don't have uh, any pigs that seem to be looking like they're getting sick or maybe they've pulled a muscle or anything. Um, and if they happen to do that, we will pull them out um, and uh, work at getting them better. And then, so that pretty much takes care of morning course. And then we will go through and work on the grain operation. Uh, this time of year, we're getting ready for a uh, planting season um, and in the fall for the harvest. But then in the evening, we will make sure that we come back in and we do a quick walk through the barn just to make sure everything is good throughout the, more, uh, throughout the day, uh, make sure everything is working correctly. And then we'll start that all over at 4.30 the next morning. Sounds busy. Um, can you, uh, another question would be, what, what do you wear to the farm? Do you shower in and shower out? What, you know, what, what are you wearing to the farm? Yep. So, uh, modern hog farmers or guys that take care of, uh, buildings like this, uh, take lots of showers, um, just because of our biosecurity. So typically when I start out first thing in the morning, I will take a shower when I walk into the nursery and I will then come out to the barn and I will wear a pair of coveralls that stay in that barn the whole entire time. Um, and then I will go through and as long as we don't have any sickness on our farm, we're able to not, we don't shower into each farm. 
Now, if we were to start to have a sickness or we look like we're getting the flu or anything like that, then we will shower in, shower out, or it may be a thing that maybe myself only does that barn and dad will take care of the other um, if need be. So biosecurity and making sure that we don't get our pigs sick is a very important thing for us um, just to make sure that we don't infect an entire barn. Um, so that's kind of what the great thing about these virtual field trips are is it allows you guys to come into our barns and see exactly what we're seeing and how our barns operate without having to get out here and run the risk of not only uh, you getting dirty or anything, but you bring in possibly a sickness to us as well. Great. How about what you're wearing? Do you wear boots or what, what do you wear in the barn? Yep. So we've got rubber boots uh, that stay at each barn. And then we have a set of coveralls that stay with each barn as well. So, um, and then as they get dirty, then we do the wash in the barn um, and, and put new coveralls on uh, pretty much every morning. Um, so there's lots of laundry and everything that happens uh, in our park. Okay, sounds great. Um, I'm gonna have, um, Anthony, I'm gonna have Dan throw up the slide that shows the life cycle of a pig. Maybe you sure. can talk a little bit about this and then identify where these pigs are in that life cycle and how that works. Yep. All right, so here we're talking about the gestation or the mommy pig um, and their life cycle of 114 days, or as we say, the triple threes, um, from when a gilt or a female pig would get pregnant. Um, then it is from that day, it's three months, three weeks, and three days. So we know that they're going to deliver their litter of pigs on that. Once they're delivered uh, and they're born, uh, there's typically about that two to three pounds uh, at birth, and then at 21 days old, which is when we get our pigs, uh, they are moved from the uh, farrowing unit to a farm like what ours is, to a nursery farm. Uh, and then from the nursery, uh, ours is set up on a 49-day rotation, so we're right at seven weeks. Um, but they will come in, and they will uh, get special care as much as we can. Uh, especially for the first three or four weeks that they're in the nursery. Uh, we spend about 40 hours a week just in the nursery alone, uh, not counting what we do for our other barns, just to make sure that all of our pigs get started off right. On that. And then that is in the nurseries where they get uh, introduced to a corn and soybean diet instead of a pellet diet uh, that has kind of some milk replacer and gets to start it off right on that. And then from the nursery, um, then they will go into a finishing barn like we're in here today. And as I said, then they will be in here for another 16 to 17 weeks, depending on, on what we, uh, on what we're, the, our target weight of getting them out of here. On them. So our target weight is usually about 285 to 295 pounds. Um, and then we will put them off the mark. Sorry about that. Last question oh, from, from me before we move on to the next, um, to move on to the classrooms asking some questions are, um, what breeds of pigs do you have in your barn? What breeds of pigs do you raise? Yep, so ours is a mixed breed. Uh, so we have a little bit of ants and uh, Duroc female, um, and to be honest with what we have right now, um, on the boar side or the, the male side of that, I'm not sure what exact uh, flow that we're on uh, right now. I do know that uh, it is a land race in a Yorkshire, but I do know that there's another one that is in on that, on the boar side. Okay. Great. Well, with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and open it up to our classrooms, um, and we can have them ask questions. Uh, How Elementary, if you are, if you'd like, if you want to type your questions into the 
um, Bar there will be sure to ask them. Um, but let's start with and uh, do you have a couple of questions for us? Why do pigs squeal? Yes, why do they squeal? Cry. Why do they squeal or cry? Uh, it's kind of their way of talking to others. Uh, you can kind of see that when they squeal, they'll kind of move one out of the out of the way. Um, one of the things that uh, you kids may have heard is the term "boss hog," um, and that goes to every pin that we have here. Uh, there is a boss hog in each pin uh, that kind of rules the uh, rules the pin. Uh, he makes sure he gets to the feeder first, gets to the water first. Um, and as they kind of, you can kind of see those guys there are kind of moving him out of the way. Um, that's just kind of how they talk, uh, with each other and, uh, I guess kind of complain to each other as well when someone is doing something to them. Kind of like you and me. Good. Another question, Dunlo? John? Um, how do pigs get older? How do pigs get older is what he asked. How do they get older? Well, they're just like you and me. Every day they continue to eat and they drink uh, and get a good diet. And uh, with the corn and soybeans, I can say that they eat their vegetables. So make sure you guys eat your, your, your fruits and vegetables. Um, but it's just, uh, just a normal day for them is to eat and drink and continue to get bigger, just like you and me. Good. All right, let's take one more question from Dunlow before we move on. Sophia, real loud. Where do your pigs sleep? Where do the pigs sleep? The pigs sleep right here in the barn. Um, just the same pen that they're in is where they they will stay, um, and they will kind of sleep. And uh, pigs are a very uh, are an animal that all want to lay close to each other. So they're always trying to touch each other and lean up against each other uh, and use each other for uh, pillows. So, uh, but they will sleep. Once they're moved into this barn, this is their pen that they will be in um, the, the entire time. Good. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask, we have some questions from Howe Elementary, and I'm going to ask those. And then Royal View, if you want to get ready, um, you guys can go next and ask some questions. Um, the first question from Howe Elementary is, do you name the pig? <laughs> no, we don't name the pig. Um, now, that's not to say that we haven't had, that my kids haven't had a favorite pig uh, that's out here. Uh, as you can see, most of our pigs are all white. They don't have any markings or, or dots on them. Um, however, there is once in a, once in a while out of a, out of a group of pigs that we get through here that we do, uh, that we might get some orange marking or some blue butt uh, that we call that has some, uh, some, uh, makes their skin make it look like a little blue markings on it um, that our pigs will our kids will kind of watch those um, as they continue to grow up but as far as naming them though we don't name our name our pigs we've got lots of other animals on the farm that we have names for just too many pigs okay um <laughs> next question is um is it hard to take care of all those pigs is it hard um no, it's not hard. Uh, it's just a lot of labor-intensive work, um, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, the biggest thing that uh, modern farms like this have done is made it easier for us to be able to take care uh, of the feed and the water situation that we have. Um, and especially being in a temperature-controlled uh, room, when I was a kid, we used to have our own moms on the farm. and we would have them in old style barns to where our waters would freeze up in the winter time or in the summertime it would be so hot our pigs wouldn't want to eat during the day and they would only eat at night and just a lot of a lot of issues that would come with that where in a modern barn like we're standing in today with the temperature controlled i don't have to worry about uh fixing water problems or having uh lines freeze up 
I don't have to worry as long as there's feed trucks coming. Uh, we don't have to worry about grinding our own feed or doing any of that anymore. Um, so what it has done is the same amount of time that we would have spent uh, fair one to finish a uh, hundred mommies uh, and taking their uh, babies up to finish weight uh, just for a hundred cells, I can do the same thing with 7,000 hogs because of the modern technology that we have. Um, the other nice thing is, is I can connect with my phone to where I can get into the computer system. And if we're out in the field so late, and I'm going to be a little bit later so I can get a check on the barn, I can actually see and make sure that everything is working correctly off of my phone. And if there's an issue, then I know I need to get out of the field and come here and take care of it. If there's not, then I can wait till 11 o'clock or so by the time we get done in the field. So just a lot of labor and things. Um, another question was, how do you know if they are girls or boys, and does it matter? Does it matter? Uh, well, uh, no, it doesn't matter. We do not uh, sort boys or girls out um, at all from each other. Um, they are uh, they're all treated the same. We don't give them a different diet or anything like that. Um, so our female pigs, as you can see, are called gilts or fowls. Gilts are our girl pigs or female pigs that haven't had any babies yet, and then a sow is one that has had babies. Um, and then there, as you can see, are barrows, which are ones that you see in here, along with our gilt, um, are ones that are neutered, and then boars are ones that uh, are selected to for the breeding program. Perfect. All right, um, let's see, Royal View, you are up. Your turn to ask some questions. How do you know if a pig's sick? How do you good know question. if a pig's Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you can kind of, you can, pigs do a very good job of letting us know when they're, when they're uh, not feeling very good. Their ears will kind of be droopy, and you can kind of see the one that's in front of me, how his ears are up and nice and pointy. Um, if pigs aren't feeling very good, uh, they're kind of like us. Their facial expressions are kind of down, so their ears will droop down a little bit. Um, or you may be able to see kind of how they're breathing. Um, if they're uh, labored on their breathing at all, um, we can tell if we've got any issues with that. Um, and then one other way we can see if we're getting uh, – an entire barn that might not be feeling very good is if our water consumption or how much they drink actually starts to fall off. Uh, then we know that we have to really start paying attention and see if we can find anything uh, that we can see with them. Um, all right, another question from Royal View. Can I take I didn't catch that. Can a pig do any tricks? Can a pig do any tricks? <laughs> uh, well, we will, sometimes uh, we will find a pig that is out in the middle of the aisleway. So you can see that we have two different uh, two different sides of the barn, and we have an aisleway there. Um, so there are some pigs that uh, we like to call Houdini that will work their way out and somehow. Uh, get out of the pen every once in a very uh, great while. Um, so I guess we could call those uh, Houdini, but uh, other than that, we don't really try to see if we can do any good. All right, one more question. What's the happiest pig in the farm? Can you say it one more time, buddy? What is the heaviest pig in the barn? What is the heaviest pig in the barn? What is the heaviest pig in the barn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in this barn here, uh, probably about 120 to 130 pounds. Um, it's probably the biggest uh, pig in this barn here right now. Um, in, our, uh, in our finishing barn, we're actually going to start selling out of uh, that here next week. Um, so we're probably in that 
close to 290 to 295 pounds uh, range uh, in the other bar. Great. All right, let's have one more question from each class. Um, so you wanna, we'll head back up to um, Dunlow if you want to ask one more question. Kenton, real loud. Why do pigs have hooves? Why do pigs have hooves? Well, uh, it's just how God created them. Uh, the same as he did horses or cows um, or anything like that. That's just what they use uh, what God gave him to be able to walk on. Good answer. Um, all right. And how elementary, if you want to type one more question in, that would be great. So, um, Royal View, what do you, uh, what, what, what's your last question? Does a pig cough? Does a pig cough? Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, pigs will cough. Um, sometimes that is another precursor to if we... It was how much does a pig cost? How much does a pig cost? Ah. Okay. Um, as far as, that's probably a hard for me to answer uh, just because we don't buy our pigs. Um, typically, that's done on a market. Um, but to be honest, I don't know what, where the markets are right now for a baby pig. Maybe, Melissa, you might know a little bit more on that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just, it's, it, it just depends. I mean, if, if we're selling a, a show pig, you know, it might cost $150 for a, a 40 pounder. Um, and then a fat hog, um, we are probably up in the, yeah, I don't know, one, probably 180, 190, um, 180 or 190 dollars um, for a fat hog. So, um, yeah, it just kind of varies. All right, our last question from How Elementary is: How do you know when a girl pig is pregnant? How do we know when a girl pig is pregnant? So, there are tests that we can do um, that are kind of gives us a a picture into inside the pig. Um, that are able to go through and do a pregnancy check um, on that. Okay, perfect. All right, well, um, with that, we wanna say thank you so much to Anthony for joining us today and sharing uh, so much information about his hog barn and what he does for a living and, and how he's a producer. Um, so if each of the classrooms want to take a chance, take an opportunity here, we'll come back to you one more time and you can tell Anthony, thank you and, and tell the pigs goodbye. And that would be great. So starting off with Dunlow Elementary. You guys are very welcome. All right. How about Royal View Elementary? Thank you. You're very welcome. Enjoy Perfect. everyone's summer. And, and um, how elementary said, thank you very much. They learned a lot today. So uh, again, thanks so much for joining us and special thanks to our sponsors, Farm Credit Services of Mid-America, the Ohio Soybean Council and Cargill. And thanks to Anthony for sharing with us. So have a great day guys and have a great summer. Thanks everybody. Thank you.